my really bad advice is like, if, if you want to be in a band and you want to be a successful rocker, man, like you just got to commit a hundred percent of your life and make sacrifices and fuck the wives and the kids and the white picket fences and all that shit. Like that's, 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 that's gonna, that's gonna get in the way early on. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the band Calories. I am Bobby. That's Jimmy. And that's Davey. This is the mystical divorce podcast episode 22. And tonight we have, Blasco! Let's fucking do it! <laughs> of cryptic slaughter, drown, suffer, dance, <laughs> rob zombie, <laughs> just run, six, seven, and on the Osborne! Blasco! What is up, my dude? Wait, what so is, uh, is it is it Blasco or Mr. Blasco? Which, which one do you prefer? So, uh, <laughs> what, whatever, whatever works for you guys, man. You guys are Mr. you guys Blasco are very <laughs> you guys are very excitable, very early on rock and roll time of the, of the day. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you stopped drinking. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Early, we haven't gone to bed yet. Oh, hey, come on. Oh, come on. All right, so oh, awesome, so excited. To- go. Top, <laughs> top of the podcast. All right, we named off all your bands, but sell yourself, Rob Blasco. <laughs> Rob Blasco. <laughs> um, yeah, let right. us. For those two, For those don't know, two kids, there's like, you know, a 16, 17 year old kid who doesn't know anything that needs to know. How about, yeah, give them your resume so they know. <laughs> your Wikipedia in audio form. Yeah, man. I mean, look, I mean, I've been a, a musician, I guess, for as long as I've been alive, just about. Um, and, uh, you know, fortunate to have kind of found that path through kiss destroyer if i'm going to be super obvious about it um you know 1977 was a was a powerful year for me in influence wise so kiss destroyer face paint blowing fire spitting blood kind of never wanted to do anything other than that and um and here we are you know what i mean like so so uh yeah i've played in a bunch of bands i currently play in Ozzy Osbourne's band. And um, before that, I was in Rob Zombie's band for a long time. And, um, you know, done, done, a, done a bunch of stuff, man. And then I, I I work behind the scenes mostly now, you know, I manage bands, and I sign bands to record label, you know, man, like I just, just do it, but it's all rock and roll. You know, everything I do is, is all on the fringes of, of rock and roll spirit for sure. So excited to be here with you guys um Thank you. Oh. yeah no, the recipe sounds good guys but i think you want to pass or i think we're gonna go with someone else um it looks good keep up the good work but we're going with another candidate and uh, i understand totally out there yeah <laughs> um oh yeah yeah you just, you just rattle all this stuff off but this is super easy it's just like hey, pile of shit <laughs> oh, I got well let's uh what, what's that noise? What's that noise? Is there a cat? Yeah, yeah. It's Jackie, Jackie, Jackie Daytona. Um, so let's see you him. Know, he's making a lot my, of noise in the ear. My, yeah, he's he's like he's like. Can I get in on the act? I want to meet the Calabrese hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> so, Famous cat. That's yes, right. he's called him a serious. So this is this is Jackie Daytona, named after uh, Matt Berry's character in uh, What We Do in the Shadows. Um, which, oh, should be, uh, yeah. <laughs> which should be very on brand for you guys. <laughs> so I'm going to guess, yeah, just a normal human being, Jackie Daydona. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute, that's a giant rat. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I'm going to guess you watched the show, right? Oh, yeah. It was, it was probably the thing that got me through COVID um, more than anything else, like more than Tiger King or, you know, anything. Oh, yeah. And, and, oh, yeah. and, and, and so the, the way that it, how it started was like, someone was like, Hey, have you seen what we do in the shadows? It sounds like something you'd be into. And I was like, I think I've heard of it, but I'm not sure there's a movie and a TV show. Where do I start? Like, how does that work? And uh, my buddy Andy was like, I'll do the movie first because yeah. there's a cameo that won't make sense in the TV show. If you don't watch the movie first, even though they're, kind of loosely related it's that the cameo is only going to make sense if you see the movie first so that's what we did watch the movie first or i watched the movie first and then i watched the first episode of the tv show and then i brought the wife in and i was like this is this is our thing and so so we were we were in and then 
I think the, the, I don't remember what it was. It was like, we, so we binged the whole first season and then the second season was coming out freshly, I think at that point, I don't remember how it all came to, but we probably binged, watched both seasons 10 times in a row or something like it was just, it's just, it's the, it's just the greatest show. So very, very excited for uh next season, which, you know, hopefully, I don't know when that comes out, maybe this year, hopefully. So, Oh my God. So, yeah. But then we got, but then somewhere in the midst of that, we got Jackie Daytona, who was, mm-hmm. who was named Blake at the, at the rescue. And, um and we got him and, and we're like, well, what, you know, what do we get to name him? And I go, no. Jackie Daytona, of course. <laughs> and, um and so, so, so naturally, so there he is. All right, I've got a burning question. Oh, oh very good. burning question. Got to know. <laughs> you medication for that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you rub it what you, Yeah. <laughs> okay, liquid death. What do you have to do with liquid death? I'd never been excited about water until now. <laughs> liquid death. Uh, uh, the logo, everything, the artwork is just like everything about it is like perfect. It feels like it's an art project come to life that's in the real world uh and what do you have to do with that yeah i I met them very early on in sort of the infancy of the brand uh mike cesario is 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 the guy he's you know he's the the founder ceo guy and he's got a um he's got an advertising background but clearly he's got his thumb on the pulse of you you know what's cool And, and, and if you if you kind of diagnose it you're like where can I, where, how can I make a cool brand in a space that doesn't have anything cool? Right. And like, how do, how do I, how do I create, how do, how do I create a, a, a lifestyle product where there currently really isn't any, right? Like who the fuck wears a crystal geyser t-shirt, right? Like no one. (laughs) And, uh, so, so, um, (laughs) right. Not happening. Not happening. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, the Fiji. Yeah, not, it's totally not happening. So, so, uh, so I got I got brought in pretty early to help sort of connect the dots on so on some music stuff. And uh, I've, I've been there I've been there for a couple of years now, and stoked to be a part of it. And yeah, I do I do marketing, and I'm a shareholder, and and I'm proud proud to be a part of a, a brand that's like that's just blowing up and it's super cool, Movement. you know? Yeah, yeah, it, it is. And it's, and it's super cool. And, it, and it's, I'm, I'm stoked to be, I, I think that's what kind of what I was saying earlier is all things that I do are sort of on the fringe of rock and roll. Right. So it's like liquid death is a can water company, but rock and roll spirit, man, all the way. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's just like, you know, you go to the rock shows and everyone's like, you know, Pippin Jägermeister and Budweiser and all that. But it's like, what about the straight edge kids? You got nothing. They want something around. No, no. All ages yeah. shows that happen sometimes. Yeah. No, it's, it's yeah. synonymous. When I think of Jim Morrison, I think of water. I really do. <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> he died. He's got to hydrate, with a, dude. With yeah, a, a 40 bathtub. ounce of water. Poor yeah. guy. Fucking hydrate or die. Yeah. yeah. Elvis died on, on the bathtub, that had, no, on the toilet, which has water Which in has it. water? So it's all, it's all connected to rock and roll. There's water yeah. in alcohol, right? <laughs> so There's ice cubes and mixed drinks. No. Well, we got that a surprise so awesome. you want to oh, yeah, let's, let's, tell them? Let's check it out. Let's... So we, so we're sorry to say we have not tried this before, but we're gonna do it live with you right now. We've got nice. this off the case, and this is what's awesome: the packaging, everything about. It. I'm so happy you're a part of this because when I saw it first come up, I was like, "This is so fucking rad." Murder so, thirst. Who's the artist? I, is it? Do you have anything of like the art directing the art? I even want to wear the shirts that you guys have for sale on, on your store. I'll send. I'll send. I'll send you guys some. So. This, but, uh, this guy that that hooked me right there when as soon as I saw that these look like beers it's it'll fool anybody <laughs> that, that's, a, that's another one of those that, take- that was one of those things oh yeah yeah because it's, it's really? cool so not only is it cool but you feel cool drinking it yeah I do <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's, what's what's uh luxuriate on this box here is this like a collector box Dude, for it's like a, a skate company I've yeah. seen people wear it on for their all- yeah I think I, I'm pretty sure that the art on that box is is Will Corsola from um, uh, he he does a bunch of stuff with Adult Swim. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh my God. Um, Why is water so exciting? So How did you do it? We've never. <laughs> I've never had it. Jimmy's never had it. Bobby's never had it. 
it's just amazing artwork. We love art. So now, <clears throat> now, <laughs> do you have one with you? I am a man. You want to let? Yeah, I can. Let, let me go. Let me go get one. Of course right. you don't. We're gonna Why? crack it open. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it together. <laughs> Liquid death, mountain water, murder your thirst. Murder your thirst, folks. If yeah, you haven't seen this, this is my, mine's Mr. mine's already <laughs> open, but but uh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh you right. can't you can't wait for the audio. Pop. All right, Bobby, give yours in. Audio. Right, I'll do mine. Whoa. Here we go. Count of three. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. That sounds refreshing. Okay. All right. Uh, cheers. To cheers. hydrating. To hydrate. Let's burn that <laughs> thirst. Yeah. yeah. And, you got, and you guys in Arizona, you know all about hydrating, right? Like, you fucking could die. Yeah. yeah. It's starting to heat up out there, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell you what. Here's another thing about Arizona. Oh, man. You murdered your thirst. Fuck oh, that can. <laughs> He's, he's got to take a piss halfway through this interview. Um, I'll tell you what, in Arizona, there's no uh, there's no water out here. Everything is recycled. So our toilet water is going back in to our drinking uh, water. I'm drinking toilet water? We're drinking, we're drinking <laughs> filtered shit. So it's good to have some the good yeah. stuff on hand. I tell you what, it's, it's good water, too. It doesn't have like that bottled you know when you're on tour and you have all those cases of water in the back of the van it heats up and it like tastes like plastic tastes like plastic. By, the, yep. uh, by the end of the tour like oh, but this it, it ain't gonna happen here folks yeah no it's way awesome. it's also got a um it's just a different vibe drinking water yeah. from a can it's, yeah uh yeah it's not sparkle water it's not flavored water it's oh my god fucking... speaking of that all right glasgow you, yeah, you got the sparkling stuff. You got the normal water. Pick yeah, we do make idea. the sparkling. Yeah, uh, yeah we got a million, I million dollar idea. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Love those. Flavored, flavored water. water. Yeah, when are you guys going to do flavored? Yeah, and then call it um, spicy water, and then you could thank us on the can. You don't have to send us money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you, I think so. I think works? some. I think no. I think so, some bars that we've partnered with create their own cocktails with it and um uh, and in different type of like bitters and and whatnot so it's it's you know it's for it's 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 a, it's a uh it's a clean canvas for you guys to experiment with <laughs> there you go good <laughs> yeah. that's a good pivot but also as you know as a collector like i don't know a lot of the horror kids put and that on the, the freaking show yeah everyone loves you know <laughs> loves something to collect something new to collect that there's collectible boxes for the um, cases and just just the artwork itself and the t-shirts and all the stuff that you guys have Okay, right. So everyone go check it out. Mr. Yeah, Blasco, you fuck, did it again. Fuck. How the fuck did you get Joe Mio <laughs> to sell his soul? I've been seeing that ad all the time. I love Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Today, you can do uh, liquid death. Death for, saves. People are like, you know, this is too extreme. You can get liquid death. Holy water. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. 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 Good one. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Blessed right. by the gods of rock and roll. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Mm. So as, all right, just, uh, I was kind of fanboy on you a little bit, you know, as a bass player myself oh. and as a marketing nerd myself, <laughs> I just, you know, look look to your career, look at what you're doing, and uh, I'm super, uh, super stoked. Hey, wait a second. See. You kind of look the same. Jimmy yeah, wears glasses. I do. I should I should have worn my glasses. <laughs> I should. I used this to have is, long hair, not wait, as long as yeah. that. Can I be like you? <laughs> <laughs> go on. <laughs> I don't know. I just want to say I uh, really appreciate you, you coming on here. Yeah, you rule. You're awesome. Just like, you know, just so cool to see your, you know, the bass playing and then the, the marketing and all that stuff. And like so many bands. So One, many bands. two, three, right. four, five, six, seven. <laughs> all right. Well, but let's go back to all right. Something else you're currently doing is your uh, podcast, Volume Forever podcast. That's right. <laughs> Me and Bobby are down with the doom. So it's awesome that you focus on doom bands. Um, <gasps> I'm always sharing new bands, so I'm I'm glad I found your podcast because I'm like always trying to discover new doom bands and like sending to Bob and <laughs> like Bob, steal them. <laughs> let's here's some awesome riffs. Yeah. Oh. So what are your thoughts on? Okay, some my top two, top three doom bands right now: Spelljammer, uh, Acid Mammoth, and Paul Bearer. Thoughts yep. on those bands? Yep, love all those bands. <laughs> uh, Acid Acid Mammoth is definitely very hot right now. Um, I feel like they have a they have a good trajectory and, and and people you know people really really digging them. But Paul Bear is like I mean dude they're like they're a classic you know they're super reliable. Love those dudes. And then Spelljammer I think is 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 maybe a little bit newer, but um, they just dropped the record and um, it's it's great. Um, 
man, there's, there's so much, there's so much music out there. I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of curious too, within, within your guys scene, I haven't tapped into that in, in, in years or whatever. Right. And, and, um, like how's, what's the, what's the strength of, of your guys scene now, the, the, the underground horror rock, like how's, where is that sitting today? I mean, it feels like you guys are still the, the, the Kings of that car- carrying the flag, but is, is there, is there, is there, is there, is there, a, is there another wave? Yeah. Is there another wave of, of like horror punk horror rock bands that say that, that, that the misfits reunion has sparked or, 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 or what, what's that like? That's a good, that's a good question. I do. Thank I'll you for that you answer. What the, uh, you think, and the compliment. <laughs> and the compliment. The, uh, the crown is heavy. What are, what are the words? Um, heavy lies the crown. Heavy yeah, lies the crown. Nice. No oh. need to look at that. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like an off, what is it, like a off backhanded compliment? Like, I'm, you know, like down there in the, in the, in the, the gutter with you guys. I, I'm out of that crap. Been out of, the, out of that crap for years. How is it done? Is it still okay? <laughs> No, it's shit. There, I said. You know, there is a resurgence of the. Uh, it seems like the horror punk movement is coming back. Two thousand eight was like a ride in the wave, and now it seems to be coming back again. People are back into it. I don't know, maybe because of the state of the world or whatever, but it's. Uh, yeah, it's good. I'm not sure about the new bands that. Are, I, well, I consider. What do you? What do you think? I I got I got the pulse, baby. I got the pulse. Um, I consider Ghost to be in the realm. For and, sure. Like. And I absolutely love Ghost. Where, where is it? Right here. Right there. Right and there. Ghost to me, I love Ghost. I, if I uh, words, Dave. And, <laughs> too excited. This too is excited. Mr. I Mr. love Bosco. Ghost oh, Mr. Bosco. so much. Mr. Um, Bosco. Ghost to me is like uh, like the guiding star. Like they're they're doing it. They've done it. They continue to do it. They got the killer merch. They got, they got records. They got a, like a bunch of records in their extremely yeah. relevant horror. And they do it well. They do it really well. And I um, love it. They know what they're doing. So I consider Ghost to be in our realm as well. Um, who else? Who else? Um, Side note. A suggest- Emotional Sin White, perhaps? Oh, maybe. Okay. A suggestion for your podcast. Uh, Let Doom Overtake Us <laughs> by Calabrese. There you go. Gonna, okay. I'm gonna check that one out. Man. Put that one on. There. People think it's Doom because Bobby said Doom in the in the, <laughs> <laughs> the title. Yeah. Oh man. So uh, speaking of like, um, you know, the 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 far back when you're in with us, um, God, what is it called? Again? Mug. I mean, the mug, <laughs> the Death Riders. Yeah. Love that. Love yeah. that. See. With yeah. Johnny Goddamn <laughs> Coffin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um. You had a song in Supernatural. What can you tell us about that? I love yeah. Supernatural too. I don't um, remember that. I don't. Wait, where, wait. What's Supernatural? The TV <laughs> shut up. <laughs> wait, I didn't, the TV. <laughs> there, there was, a, there was a song in that. I had no idea. Okay. Like, oh, maybe. All right. All right, Blasco. Maybe you right? could tell us how this works. Like, do people just? How do people find your songs to put them in movies and TV and stuff? Like, did you? So you didn't? We weren't even aware that it was in Supernatural. No. Uh, I mean, I think I was, but it was probably so long ago that I just, I, I don't know. I don't remember how that, how that happened, but generally speaking, it's, I don't think there's a science to it. People just kind of stumble upon stuff. And if you're fortunate enough to maybe know someone that is the music director for that particular film or TV series or whatever, that's a lot of times it's, it's that, um, a lot of times it's just luck too. Um, you know, there's, there's really, like I said, there's no science to it. Sometimes it, the most of the time, it's just something that just kind of happens. Typical response from a superstar rock star. All right. I get it. I get it. Oh, no. Yeah. All right, I here, understand. But, so like, so yeah. someone are actually like humans are finding it. Some yeah. like serendipity, like on like a TikTok or a MySpace and, um, and they go, I want that. Where, where do they go? Like, do they ask the band directly or like, is it like the ASCAP or I'm still confused of what ASCAP and all that stuff even means. Like, um, <laughs> Caveman we, we have it, and, you know, <laughs> publishers and all that stuff. But like, I don't know. We were cavemen. Um, maybe you could shine some light on like, it's, it's, it's doing, it, I mean, doing what you're already doing. I mean, you guys, like you guys do, a, you guys do a lot. Like you're, 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 you, like your social media, like it seems like you guys are willing to take risks and try stuff. And here you are doing this. It's like, yeah, I mean, you do more than most bands in terms of activity and, 
and um, you know, trying to spread your wings and go out there and kind of really push the push the brand. That's kind of what I was asking is like if if you've taken notice of any bands that have in, been influenced by you guys that are sort of that younger generation, because you guys are you guys are like really out there. Like it's it's like no one you know, there's there's few bands in any scene, really, that I think put as much effort into making a brand like you guys do. So to be honest, uh, we don't have time for those those uh, little peons. Uh, we don't <laughs> no, actually, no. You saying that reminded me. No, like there is, there is. You know, it's just kind of hard to remember sometimes. Creeper. Yeah. Creeper okay. UK. What's up, yep. Will? I love Will. But um, yeah, Creeper is in that in that vein, and they just came out with a what was that three song EP yesterday while we're recording this. But um, yeah, they got the elements. Alkaline Trio. I know they're older, but. Yeah. Those elements. yeah. Okay, let me go back. You were right. in my joke because I was going to say you were jaded rock star, but, and then I wanted to go to this quote to prove that you weren't. So, this quote here, uh, one of your, this quote from you, it says, I don't feel like I'm entitled to anything. So, to me, that's taken from some interview you did not too long ago. To me, that, that sounds like you've worked for everything, so you don't feel entitled that anyone to just give you everything. And since you've been in a band since you're 16, started recording and touring since 16, and you've, like you said, you've been doing it for a long fucking time. And like yeah. you put the time in, you paid the dues, you did it all. So you don't, so, uh, yeah. So that's another reason why we love you. Cause you don't, you know, you don't feel entitled. You just work, you're a hard worker. Obviously you're a hard worker. You did all the stuff, Rob Zombie, uh, uh, you can play with Danzig a little bit and Ozzy. And then, uh, you're coming up with out of the box thinking with liquid death and liquid all that death, kind of stuff. Manager stuff. There's a TV show. We'll talk about that. So, um, <laughs> so I said all that to say this. I discovered your first band, Cryptic Slaughter, oh, yeah. 84. I didn't realize that how, that was actually influential, but influential band, not just a footnote on there. Seeing like Fear Factory, Hate Breed, Municipal Waste, they're all referencing Cryptic Slaughter as influence. You. So your first <laughs> band in high school, I can't even, I had a thrash metal band in high school what was called, it called Savage there Assault. Thrash metal band. <laughs> nice. and, and just... It, like I can't even imagine what that would be. Like you just start a band and it's actually influential and it, and it actually leads to like where you are at today. So, uh, how yeah, the, it's, hey, let's, let's hear, let's wait. start from the beginning. How what does that feel? What's it all, what's it all about? You know, it, it's interesting, right? Cause I've been talking about this a lot during COVID and, and, and just kind of rewinding back to that time of the, of the mid eighties. And so, you know, so we put out our first record in 1986 And so comparatively, when you think of 1986, there's two highly pivotal moments in 1986 that happened in this genre of music, Master of Puppets and Rain and Blood, right? Those were those were the define. I mean, there was a lot of other shit that happened in 1986, but those were the defining moments of two of the big four, way pre big four, but that set the pace for heavy metal in a way to where it's like two very different bands that had very different messages that had very different records, right? The, the one band with like Metallica was kind of way more progressive and Slayer was kind of way more punk rock in, in terms of, and, and, and it was, and it was pre, that was right at the point to where a lot of what we were doing, no one was really doing it because they thought it was a career choice. Right. Like even even Metallica and Slayer, not necessarily thinking that this was a career choice. It was it was we were doing it for the love of making music with our friends. Right. And and hanging out and and like all the bands, because, think you know, think of like whenever we were a band, there was like there was the, the sort of Venice scene that was like suicidal tendencies and no mercy and excel and then the, then like us we were signed to metal blade records and on our label was corrosion of conformity dri um us like span raw power span beyond possession of the mentors um there it was just like it, there was just so much happening in the mid eighties and it was so robust and everything was so different and n- nothing really had labels yet. Right. It was all just this sort of second or re- wave of metal, you know? And, um, and it was, and it was just cool, man. And it was, it was the, and it was also the point too of like, 
like there was, there was a real marriage of skateboarding and, and music and how those things related and how those things were, were, um, or sort of the voice of this generation of, of my, of my generation and what it, and how it blossomed, I think was, was Lance mountain and, and, um, and black flag. And to, to me, the, those, what those things, what those two situations did is they brought down to earth that anyone can do it. Right. Because before that you had, you had things like, if you're a skateboarder, right. It was things like vert ramps. Like that's totally unrealistic. Like you can't, I mean, you can build a vert ramp in your backyard, but like who really can, right. Or like skate parks or whatever. Like if you don't, if you, if you don't live near Upland, California, you can't go to a skate park. Like they didn't have them everywhere. Like they have them, they have them now. So Lance mountain brought in street skating to where like, Oh, wow, we could go out and shred in the, in the street and like on the curb and we can, we can make, this our skate park like the, right outside the front door and so he made it accessible black flag on one level made sort of made making music accessible because i think before that if you're coming from our generation it's like you look at like kiss like arena rock or you look at the sort of the the adult oriented rock of like sticks and journey and foreigner and like all that shit was so like as great as it was, it was like super like overproduced. Right. And, and very, and almost alien in a way to where like, how do, how do, wow. How, how does that happen? Right. How do you write songs like that? How do you, and then like black flag, that kind of really, you go like, Oh, I can do that. Not marginalizing them in any way. Cause they were fucking brilliant, but like it, it kind of really kind of brought it down to a way where you go like, I've got a bass, you've got a guitar, this dude's got a drum set. We can just get in the garage and make noise and, and have fun, right? So that that mid-80s was the moment whenever like things became accessible that felt before that sort of out of touch, right? Or it was like only a different breed of people are able to do these magical things right it was like they were like magicians like how did they make the coin disappear like you know where, where, where whereas whereas lance mountain like if i using the example like lance mountain and black flag kind of brought it down to a tangible thing where you're like i i can do that too yeah i can i can do that too man and and uh granted we weren't as good as black flag or lance mountain but we they provided this the opportunity to do that so cryptic slaughter was one of those things where we just went in and did what felt natural we weren't trying to do anything we were a group of dudes that lived in a close proximity to one another we all we all did the thing that the other guy didn't do and we were able to to bring it in and scott our drummer like his parents were nice enough to let us go over there like every day of the week and watch tv and play loud music in the garage and uh we, and we just got, I think we were just blessed with an opportunity and, and uh, to get a record deal so early on. And the, the fact that people come up to me even today and like sing fucking money talks and people listen, like sing cryptic solder songs in my face. Like, it's like, that wasn't, that wasn't a goal that we kind of set out to do. We were just doing what felt natural for the time. And the fact that we walked away from it being somewhat of an influential band and, and people have taken note you know, to this day, like, you know, those bands cite us as influences is pretty fucking remarkable considering like that wasn't, that wasn't, the, that wasn't the goal. We were just, we were just having fun. Like we were kids in high school, man. Like we were just having fun, you know, and, um, and stuff. So, but very, but very fortunate to have that. Cause I think that that really, for me, that really helped set the pace for what was to follow. Like had I have not had the opportunity to put out records and be in a band and go on tour while I was in high school, I don't know that my career path after that would have been chasing music to that degree and wanting to be in a band and wanting to put out records. Right. Like I don't, I don't quite possibly my life could have gone some other route. You know, I don't, I'm not sure what, but like it just, it just could have. So um, it was a great time, man, you know, mid mid eighties, like, uh, uh, you know, if, if there's a, if, if I could find a spaceship and the, the, a time machine and go back in time, and do it all over again. Whew, mid eighties, yeah. man. <laughs> that seems like a that seems like a sweet spot. For you sure. heard, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Drop out of high school and start a band. Yeah. Rock and roll, baby. <laughs> do you rock? Do you? Were you a big skateboarder back in the day? 
Well, yeah, I mean, not professionally and, and certainly not good. Um, but, but, it, but, 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 you know, it's, it's, but, but it's like, but it's like, you know, it's like playing pool, right. Or uh, like to where it's like, no one's real. It like, it's, it's fun to play pool, even though you totally suck at it. Right. Like, and like, skate- like dude, I was going to say, yeah, I'm like, yeah, dude, I skateboard all the time. I'm a skateboarder. Totally skate once every 70 years you know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah. badly and you go to the park yeah. and get out shredded he by got a concussion old. from it so he's a little scarred bobby got yeah yeah that was, you, they, they, that, that's real i mean it becomes a time when you're like wow well, i can't <laughs> like i can't i can't i can't risk you know like the, 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 this is paying the bills man i can't they, you know but skateboarding was always fun and it, it was always it, it was just the thing that we we all were able to do. And if like, yeah, if you didn't break an arm or get a concussion, you know, that was a skill, but I always, I, we, we always really were inspired by skate culture. Um, like at the time it was the Pal Peralta movies, like animal chin. Oh, yeah. We watched the dude, dude we, every, like we would go to Scott's house three days a week and we would go and jam heavy metal in the garage. And then we would go watch like animal chin or some skateboard VHS tape, you know? Oh. And, um, time machine. get this, get this yeah. time machine now, please Let's go back. It's called YouTube. Yeah. Just oh, it. okay. yeah. yeah. Oh, and, speaking uh, of YouTube there, there's a video of you guys playing in someone's front yard. Is that the drummer's house? That, that was like some some kegger party thing that was i think the first gig that i ever did a gig you know and um uh, yeah but there wasn't you know it's like we never like we, we all lived in la dude like we weren't a band that played the whiskey or the roxy like that wasn't that wasn't the scene that you know like we just did random shit and played in shitty clubs i remember i remember we were on tour in i think like 1988 and, and we played a venue that was had it had and it was crazy, right? Because we were on tour in the summer, so it probably wasn't even from the rain. It was probably leaking pipe somewhere, and it was <laughs> it was literally dripping water from the ceiling on top of the drum set. So they put up like an umbrella, like an outdoor <laughs> patio <laughs> umbrella. <laughs> well, that's what liquid death is. <laughs> that's inspired it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> drip, drip, drip. <laughs> drip, drip. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you are a memer as well. You 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 create your meme videos. <laughs> you love your cats. You love cats in general. Cat crazy. Yeah. Uh, Rob, Ooh. TikTok when question mark. You know, I don't You're think I've got, it, dude. But I don't think I've got that kind of time, right? That's like, that's a, that's a that's a culture of people that are are very they 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 wake up and they're like, oh, I got this idea. I got this idea. I'm going to, I mean, this is the angle and I'm going to film it this way. And this is what's going to happen. Like, dude, I like I'm, I'm booking tours and fucking making records and putting bands out on the road. And you know what I mean? Like, I don't got, I don't, I don't got that type of creative time. Like I can take a photo of my cat and post it on, uh, you know, on Instagram. I, I got, I got that kind of time, but like, I don't got time to create videos, you know, like, like proper content that's going to go viral. Like I, I don't even I, like, I don't even have that creativity, you know, in me of like, what, what video am I going to do that it's going to entertain people? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't got it. So what, all right. So, so be, subjects. So no, subjects. no, I, I feel, all right. You and if you talk, you yeah, yeah, that it's great. Um, so it's, it's a, I, I like to think of uh, social media, like planets, like you've got like the Facebook planet and the Instagram planet and uh, TikTok and Twitter yeah, yeah, and yeah. You have to, you know, do different things on Mars and I, do different things I on think Earth. I think as like different cesspools. Like <laughs> ah, this guy. Yeah, he loves There's Instagram. Swamplandia. Degla Necros 138. The bog of eternal That's stench about. over there. Anyway, so like, I think you got it in you. If you wanted to do TikTok, I commend it. You, you know it's funny. And um, it doesn't have to be funny all the time. It could just literally be a video of your cat. Just put yeah. it there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With like rock and roll music behind it. I think that I just kind of doubled down on Instagram is like, that's the one that I'll spend the most amount of time on. Cause it's the one that I've, I understand the most, you know? And uh, so, so um, yeah, I'm a proud, proud Instagrammer or whatever, but yeah, TikTok it doesn't, uh, doesn't interest me. It's also uh, a younger demo too I, i'm not sure it is younger demo yeah. yeah so i don't think you know but maybe 
No, I don't know. Anyway, so I, <laughs> it's I'll, for everybody. I, it is for everybody, but yeah, most go everybody. on. Anyway, so I wanted to get your take. So, what's your hot take on? So, I read a few times in uh, some interviews you did that you were saying, like, you know, can, kind of consider yourself a hired gun because you're not like founding members <laughs> of Rob Zombie or, or founding members of Ozzy. So, what's the pros and cons of being uh, a hired gun? And then, any advice for for kids starting out that wanna, you know, just like do what you do? Yeah, any advice for musicians? Yeah, any for bass players <laughs> looking for other work? Other work? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, I think if you if you want to do what you guys do or did what I did whenever I was younger, I, I think it's exactly that. Like you said, like drop out of school and fucking join a band and fucking just commit to it. Like, like, because, and, and, and I'll say this and it's, this is like really, really bad advice. And I give out this really bad advice all, all the time, but like, but it's just in it, it, from my observation, the people that are successful in music are people that had no other option. Right. They, they it wasn't like they had a degree in fucking bioscience and then they started a band and then that, that and, and then they had something to fall back on. Right. Like the, no one that like everyone that I know that's successful in music lived in their car, lived in a fucking public storage unit. Right. Like lived at his parents house, like didn't want to do anything else. Like, dude, like when I when I got the zombie gig, dude, I was like I had two jobs. Like I worked in a used clothing store and I bar, bartended at a bar at night. Like I worked in a used clothing store during the day and I worked in a bar at night. That, that is futureless in music, you know, like that, that and, and really kind of futureless in life. Like what was I doing? Like selling used clothes and like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm not it's like, it was whatever. And I was going to be whatever I was going to become, but I wanted to be a rocker. You know, that's really what I wanted to do. And I had no, I had no backup plan, right? There was, there was, there was no 401k that I had that I was, that I was relying on or, or, or like, you know, I mean, I graduated high school. Yeah, sure. But I had no, <laughs> but I just, cause just cause I, just cause I wanted, just cause I had to, but like, not, it wasn't like I left there with some vision for the future other than being a rocker. Like I literally graduated high school, moved in with my buddies and kept playing in bands and, and, you know, eventually got record deals or whatever. So my really bad advice is like, if, if you want to be in a band and you want to be a successful rocker, man, like you just got to commit a hundred percent of your life and make sacrifices and fuck the wives and the kids and the white picket fences and all that shit. Like that's, 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 that's gonna, that's gonna get in the way early on. Right. Like it's like, you, you gotta, you gotta be fucking all the way, all the way in. Um, it remind, reminds me of that quote with like the Vikings when they landed on, um, you know, uh, new, yeah, Plymouth Rock <laughs> to, to take over the territory. They'd burn the ships. Cause the only way to go is go forward. There's no going back. So you got to burn the ships. And uh, my favorite quote is put all the eggs in one bas basket and don't drop the fucking basket. And uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Don't drop the fucking basket. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Do you, I also saw also a quote from you before. Man, you have a lot of quotes out there. You, you mentioned that you don't, you're not a songwriter. Do you not, do you not, do you, do you ever write songs? Have you ever, have you, have you not, have you stopped? Yeah. Not, I, I've written, I've, I mean, look, anybody can write a song and I'm one of those people that yeah, can write a song and, has written a song, but have I ever written a good song? No. Um, <laughs> oh, it's kind of like skateboarding. Yeah. <laughs> right. Honesty. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it, 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 it's that. I mean, like, you know, I was thinking about it the other day and I was like, oh, wow, you know, like in terms of a mus in terms of a, a musician, like, you know, I think, of, I think of it this way, right? Just, you can learn an instrument and be a musician and be, be a, uh, be good at your instrument, be great at your instrument, whatever that, that does not. And then inherently make you a songwriter. You know what I mean? Like you, you can know how to read and write, but it doesn't make you an author, you know? Um, and, and, and I kind of look at it that way. Like, you know, it's back to my pool analogy. Like, you know, I'm no good at playing pool, but I really like it. Right. Like I really like, I really like sitting around writing songs and, and, uh, and, uh, playing, playing an instrument and whatever, but like, I've never made any money from it. <laughs> you know, I never, I never, I never made any money from, from writing songs and any of that. Like it, that, that is not a skill set that I am strong in, but like, 
dude, you, you want to give me a set list? You want me to learn it? You want me to show up on time and you want me to kick ass on stage? No problem. Fucking that is a, that is a, a skill set that I am very confident in. But like in terms of delivering that dude, a song that is good, that, that, that is good, that kids are going to want to sing. And no, that, that's not, that's not a, that's not a high skill set that I have. He's like the hitman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Takes you out. But thank you for the influence though, that you did have an influence, even though you're just, you know, not a founding member, I'm sure, you know, being around Ozzy, being around Rob Zombie, uh, you know, you do have a, a an influence on the culture, on the... You, you are know. who you hang out with. Yeah. And then so they, you know, by rubbing off on you, I'm sure they, uh, Danzig likes cats more because of you and all that stuff when you're out there. <laughs> but no. But Everyone right. loves cats. I so, love them. So any other advice? So basically, yeah. So advice if you want to start off, just go for it. So you don't have to be a, a hit songwriter. You can just be... Well, I guess our friend Emilio, uh, yeah, he was uh, always a hired gun joining folks on different stuff. And then he, you know, now he's the front man to... Um, Dark Ride. Dark Ride. Yeah. So you can you can lead to there, but you don't have to start there. So that, that's oh, that's another one of those bands, folks. Dark Ride. Dark Ride, yeah. Oh yeah, there's another band <laughs> coming out. Your hair out yeah, long, yeah, there's there's no, I mean there's there's no science, there's no rules, right? I think you just I think you just got to go for it, um, and follow follow what works. You know, for me, like wanting to be a higher gun was the thing of like, Cryptic Slaughter was great, and that was a that was a fantastic way to kind of start off a, a career and and look dude like if, if my career ended at cryptic slaughter like that would have ended more than most people like i put out three i put out i was signed to metal blade and put out three records before i graduated high school that's a fucking that's a that's a legitimate oh, oh, oh. okay career you yeah, know that's popular like, dude i made my <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a legitimate okay career, you know. And then and then after that, in the '90s, like I, I went through the '90s ringer of getting signed to a major label and doing all that and getting dropped, you know, after you put out your record and after you spend half a million dollars making a record and it, like I did you know did all that. But at that point, I was like, oh man, like I don't I don't want to I don't want to be I don't I, I would rather. I would rather just play songs that are already hits than try and write hits. It just became, it just, it, and it's, it sounds fucking stupid when you say it out loud. Um, brilliant. I love it. Um, but, but like, that's, that's literally what I said. I was like, I would rather just play. I would rather just be in bands that are already successful. I would rather play songs that are already hits. Right. And like, I, I, I like, I, it, like I have no pride. I, 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 I have no, I have no pride in, my, in myself that I think that I need to be the guy. Right. And so like, I'm happy, I'm happy to, I'm happy to be a support. I'm the support team of the guy, Glenn Danzig, Rob Zombie, Ozzy Osbourne, happy to have that career as the, known as the guy that is, is going to make the dude on the ticket and the dude on the t-shirt make that guy look super awesome every night. I'm happy to have that job and, um, and, uh, it's all good. You know what I mean? So, and, and, and in terms of that, look, I, I don't know, like I, I said one day, I just want to play other people's music. That's already fucking cool. And somehow that happened. Um, and it kept happening and keeps happening. I, 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 I don't, I don't know other than I think that it, it's very simply, I can break it down to this one was geography. Cause at, at, at the time, you know, there wasn't YouTube and stuff and you couldn't audition. You had to, you had to be where everybody was. It just so happened that all those dudes live in LA. And so, and so do I. So I think a lot of that shit was geography. And the other thing is that you just not be an asshole. I think that it's, it's, I, I, I was, I was, I was there, I was accessible and I was professional and not a dick and it, it, a lot of times i think that it can't it really came down to it, it those simple tactics Jeez, what, what's your uh going rate can we uh <laughs> we'll look at mr uh sorry bro oh we can have two bases <laughs> <laughs> yeah dueling base i can play tambourine <laughs> yeah but also i guess in your words of wisdom too it is like love what you do and play uh yeah that's it all starts from the love of music okay so and cry Okay, <laughs> Rob Blasco of a million hit making bands. <laughs> Mercenary man. Because Liquid Death. Yes, because <laughs> this is the Mystical Cult, Cult of Horrors, Horrors podcast. Spooky. <laughs> Very spooky. Do you have a ghost story? And is it a spicy one? No. Oof, I wish I was uh, prepared for that. I, I honestly 
don't. I, I don't know that I've ever been around or been in uh, the proximity of something that I felt was was ghost like. Um, you know, uh, uh, no. I, unfortunately, I, have, I, I. What about know. your cats? Have your cats sensed any beings in your house <laughs> that uh, hissing at visible things? They have no. Senses, the sixth sense? No. No. I. I, I, I <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like there's always something where like, what are you looking at? And then it's like, turns out it's a squirrel, you know, <laughs> like, why are you acting weird? Oh, then we just had an earthquake. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're, <laughs> okay. No, that's fine. That's, that's totally fine. fine. That's so fine. you have no demons around you. That's good to know. It's probably, probably from being a good guy. That's probably but, Either that, or either that, or I'm just totally ignorant to it, right? And and it's like this clearly obvious thing that is paranormal is like I just like oh oh yeah, it's just because a plane flew over, you know? Like I, I can just quick, quickly just it's like I'm a, like right like we're all dudes, right? Dudes have a certain kind of thing of like like there there is no there there, there is nothing kind of there's nothing bad that kind of really ever happens right like your arm gets lobbed off and you're like oh that's cool i don't need to go to the hospital it'll just grow back <clears throat> you know like <laughs> it's like that type of thing it's right it's fine yeah. <laughs> um so we're, we're coming to the end of the podcast uh, boo, 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 boo. boo we got more questions what do you mean we got, we got <laughs> a million more questions for you, but time. time um so rob blasco ah. Where can people find you? Where, th where can they give you all their money? They could support you, uh, follow you, et cetera. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm easy. <clears throat> so anywhere that I am is Blasco 1313, 1313. Um, and uh, so that's primarily Instagram, but like I've got Twitter and Facebook and all that other shit, and, but I never use any of it, but, um, but I'm there if, if, if you want. So anywhere that I am that you think that I might be, Blasco 1313, and I'm either there or not, but I'm only under that handle. Oh, okay. I'm going to look you up on uh, Twitter or uh, TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. <Hold on. laughs> Where is he? He said he was here. <laughs> I think I do actually have an account, and I think I uploaded one video of me at, uh, at a Laker game. Um, and there was this, it, it, was, it was TikTok, like, it was like TikTok viral sensation possibility right and um because it, it, it was like uh this this kid was behind me screaming and it was like it was like a battle for la game where it was the clippers versus the lakers and i'm a clippers guy and he was a he was a lakers guy but he was like a kid and he was like right behind me and he was screaming at lebron the whole fucking game <laughs> like like every offensive play every defensive play and the the lakers lost that game and it was fucking glorious because I just wanted to punch that kid in the face because he was, he was, he was he didn't understand that he would scream. And so I, I filmed it or whatever, and I posted it and um, I never paid attention to TikTok, but I posted on TikTok and I, uh, maybe, maybe it is viral at this point. I don't know. But, 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 uh, but, uh, but on Instagram, it was f like people died it, because it was just so fucking hilarious. <laughs> All right. So, All right. Thank you so much for being with us. We have a partying gift for you. Okay. Yeah, a piece from the iconic Calibris wow. collection. Nice. The classic. <laughs> That's the classic. right. We have yeah. uh, five different options. I'll get you information later and you can pick out which style you want. Um, yeah, but for everybody else, CalibrisStore.com, pay up. Um, <laughs> and uh, what? what episode are we on this has been episode 22 22 of the calibrix uh, mystical cool. wars wow. podcast thank oh, you for yeah. being with us rob you fucking of course so we much. salute you awesome. thank you <laughs> and cut Woo! okay yeah so yeah we, we have a little bit of time here but um yeah rob so so kind of you to do this with us this for sure cool. man anytime i did i was like i i mean i i saw i found the photo or i saw the photo relatively recently of us Whenever we met at that horror convention, oh, yeah. like a hundred years ago, yeah. <laughs> in Burbank, I think it was Burbank. I don't even remember what the convention was. It, it, it was probably Fango or something stupid. Fango, yeah, yeah, Fango, yeah. yeah Fango probably. Fun. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, yeah dude. Cool. Yeah. Um, also, side note, I make uh, Instagram filters and shit like that. And oh, cool! Since, since you're 
our pal. I could just do it for the hell of it. Um, yeah, I make all the Calibris ones. I made the Wednesday 13 ones, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so like for like you or Liquid Death or something like that, um, see what I could do and whip up some stuff. And, That'd be cool. I don't I inst like I wonder if Liquid Death has had one of those. It seems like something that they would have done. But then now I think about it and I go, I don't I wonder. I don't know. But that sounds cool. It's good to know. Congrats on all the success on that. I was so I was so excited when I learned you had a part of that. And it's just like, fuck, that's so awesome. Um, yeah, the, the big news on Thursday was we just partnered with the, with Live Nation. So it's going to be oh, yeah. the exclusive water at like 125 <laughs> venues and like Coachella and all kinds of shit. So I love that. Yeah. yeah. Exclusive one. Love Damn. That for you. And you're, you're a part owner. Woo. <laughs> well, I'm a shareholder. So, a shareholder. so it's okay. a little different. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. Whew. Amazing. Awesome. All right. All right. Yeah, close out. Yeah, close out. All right. Until the next one. Thank you so much for your taking your time. You're busy, man. So thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Very cool. Good seeing you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Take it easy. Well, I take her.